What's up, fellas? Coming at you today with my first uh, album review ever. Well, <laughs> actually, this is my second review I've ever done. I also am a part of the Waffle Podcast, uh, where we talk some shit and review albums sometimes. I reviewed with the boys uh, the new Death Grips album, You're the Snitch. I'll link... Uh, I'll put a link in the description of this video to the Waffle Podcast where I'm featured often. But okay, this is my first review on this channel, alright? <laughs> but before we get into that, I gotta shout out our album of the video, which is actually a pretty well-known black metal band, but we got ourselves some Zaster with, uh, <laughs> I can't, I can never pronounce this right. Astas Pretium 2018. Basically, the story behind this, I saw Zaster live, actually, um, earlier in the summer. Uh, they were playing all acoustic songs. I'm assuming they're songs off this CD. This CD is was a, co a concert exclusive. You can only buy it there. I don't know if it's on YouTube or anything like that. But yeah, Scott Connor and uh, two other musicians, they played some songs acoustically, and it was amazing. It was like literally the smallest venue I've ever been to, like the smallest show I've been ever been to for sure. But now, let's get into the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about today. Arch Goats, uh, the Luciferian Crown. Now, I pre-ordered this asshole, uh, <laughs> like, the second I saw the pre-orders go up on Bandcamp, so I was, uh, lucky enough to snatch the deluxe edition of the vinyl. It comes in this little, uh, jacket right here. Slip that off, and we got ourselves that album cover, which is some kind of, uh, satanic orgy <laughs> you know got mostly women but you know there's some demons some skeletons and got a little baphomet up there you know overseeing their little uh sexual liaison but yeah let's get in uh this is a gatefold really beautiful beautiful stuff here it got you know the mighty Archcoat logo right here, and got some artwork of some skeletons and witches dancing. The pressing on this is uh, gorgeous. We got ourselves a little bronze with black and gray splatter. Get that back in there. It also comes with a giant booklet, which we'll take a look at right now. logo right there, and it's basically just photos of the band members and lyrics, but there's one really cool picture in here, right here, isn't this magical, I almost want to like rip out the pages and like, <laughs> like hang this as like a poster somewhere in my apartment, but yeah, that's, that's the physical shit, but now... We are going to talk about the music. God damn it. <laughs> Set that right there. Okay. The Luciferian Crown. Now, the start of the album, we got ourselves that ambient intro that only, it only lasts maybe like 15, 20 seconds, and it goes right into Jesus Christ, Father of Lies. Cool song title. <laughs> so, it's a, it, it's also, musically, a great start to the album. Just some classic, bestial damnation. Vocals are low, gritty, and guttural. I honestly prefer the, uh, like, reverb soaks, like, echoey vocals that showed up on their earlier work or earlier work like horror bethlehem and shit like that but these vocals are still great we got a little we got some little guitar bridges throughout the track uh 
it le- and it leads right back into the chaos. Like, there's, like, little detours, but it still, like, goes right back into the action. Uh, I found it more satisfying, the, uh, this first track, than, like, some of their previous works. I mean, Archgold, they always have a, kind of a little bit of variation between uh, albums, but it's mostly the same, which I will talk about further in this review. Now, after Jesus Christ, Father of Lies, we got track two, which is Jezebel's Black Mass <laughs> Orgy, which is what I'm assuming the <laughs> album cover is about. Uh, I mean, I don't have a whole lot to say specifically about it. It's just traditional arch goat with some muffled moans and <laughs> distorted, like, beast vocals that uh, kind of flutter throughout, kind of adding a little atmosphere and some, you know, doom and, you know, satanic sexual shit. <laughs> and then, after that, we got ourselves... Messiah of Pigs. I I love the intro to this. Basically, the intro, it's the sound of a hammer hitting a metal spike and a pig crying and squealing in pain. I just, like, in my head, I envision, like, two, like, demons, like, crucifying a fucking pig on a cross. It's fucking awesome. Otherwise, it's, you know, business as usual, kind of bland, but Archgold really aren't the spearheads of any war metal sound revolution. Like, they kind of play it safe, it seems like, but there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Archgold fans know what they want to hear, and that's exactly what the band delivers here. After that, we got ourselves track four, Darkness Has Returned easily my favorite track. The riff in the beginning is really catchy and mosh friendly, I want to say. The drums aren't just blast beating, like they have they have more texture than some of the other previous and future songs on here. It's just I love that riff. It gets stuck in my head and it's just, you know, I can imagine just a giant mosh pit just running around and beating each other up. Not hardcore dancing, though. Hardcore dancing is not cool, kids. <laughs> uh, but yeah, my favorite track. It's really catchy and upbeat, and it's just war metal goodness. And then track five, Sorcery and Doom. We're about halfway through the album now. Uh, it's got a little ambient intro similar to the start of the album. But other than that, this track is a bit bland, kind of like um, uh, Jezebel's Black Mass Orgy. I mean, it's not, not the most original thing in the world. Uh, yeah, it's a little bland. It has a bridge that kind of gets my attention, like there's like a little guitar lead. Uh, but yeah, they're, they really aren't trying anything new besides a few exceptions to that. They're definitely keeping it safe, but like I just explained, you know, their Archgoat fans aren't looking to Archgoat for uh, innovation in the genre. And then next up, we got track six, Star of Darkness Abyss. I like the church bell opening, and then it goes right for the kill. Frantic drumming, (laughs) dirty ass caveman riffs. This seems to be a better structure compared to the other tracks on here. It's got a sweet breakdown, actually, coupled by a faint church choir. I'm assuming it's a satanic church. <laughs> but yeah, along with some pitch-shifted vocals, just spewing blasphemy and unholiness. I mean, not a lot of Archgoat's previ- previous stuff had breakdowns in it. I mean, when it comes to breakdowns, like... Breakdowns and Deathcore, for example, I'm not too hot on. But, I mean, they can still they can still be enjoyable. It's just like, if they're used too much, like Archgoat here, they use it tastefully, they don't rape you with blast beats, not blast beats, breakdowns. <laughs> they do rape you with blast beats, of course, but breakdowns, uh, they, they, they definitely do it tastefully here. 
what do we got after that? Um, what's it called? The Obsidian Flame Dash from my depths. I don't know. The, these next two tracks have dashes in them. I don't know why. Alright, this cut starts off a little slower, heavier, great guitar leads. There's almost some kind of like a synth, like dissonant synth, uh, like lingering in the background. Um, this is some of Arch Goat's most impressive guitar work. There's actually some melody in the leads that I think go off pretty well. This is probably my second favorite track off the album. Uh, stop messaging me, Greg. <laughs> uh, no, I love you. <laughs> then after that, we got the next track. The Luciferian Crown Dash Venom of God. Now, there's a riff down the pipe of the track that I really dig. Also, near the end, there's some... There's like a time signature switch up. Picking up the... And after, like, the... The time change picks up the pace a little bit before it was like a really groovy, like almost sludge metal influenced. But other than that, it's just textbook Arch Goat, and there's not, not much else to say about it. And now we are on the last track I Am Lucifer's Temple. Last track, uh, already right in the beginning, it's a sweet little groove. The vocals are tight and the drumming is pretty solid. Probably my favorite drum performance on the on the whole record. Uh, then we got a little interlude. There's like a murky haze and like almost like undistorted clean guitars that kind of cascade in the background that leads into another little bridge. Uh, goes to the second leg of the song. It's a different groove, but it's still you know really. Like I already said before, mosh friendly. Just really sick and impressive shit. Uh, it's a different groove, but it's still just as entertaining. So, in conclusion, uh, rating this album and albums here on out, I'm gonna have a little different of a rating system. It goes, okay, so the worst rating is uh yaint middle is yote and then we got the better rating which is yeet um i'd say this is a medium to strong yote i mean i like the album but yeah my only gripes with it were that it was a little unoriginal with the exception of a few guitar riffs and other musical passages but uh yeah decent to strong yote you know kind of in the middle i liked it i'm it i'm glad i pre-ordered it because you know it's an arch goat album it's actually the first arch goat album i have on vinyl i have the rest of them in like my hell's headbangers wish list but yeah, if you're an Archgoat fan, you're gonna love it. it. I could see this as being a starting Archgoat album, you know, it, it could be a good starter one. But yeah, just war metal goodness. And uh, yeah, that's it. <coughs>